Our recent historical and to many incredible election of an African American as president gives us hope that our nation is changing. However, because of the vested interest in and intransigence of the status quo, we must work hard to further enlighten some predominantly white colleges and universities that may unintentionally continue to cling to the vestiges of their belief in and subtle practices of white supremacy. The seemingly cyclical rise of the IQ controversy as support for the genetic inferiority of African Americans, despite its having been repeatedly and overwhelmingly debunked and reputed by, repudiated by me and others in the 1970s and others before and after my research, is perhaps one of the most blatant, however well-meaning, exercises in dehumanization that periodically emerges from the hallowed halls of the academy. The white male professors who periodically espouse and prove the genetic inferiority of African Americans are not evil monsters. They are products of the ethnocentrism of their narrow, white, male academic worlds. Hopefully, when they are no longer the rulers of this little kingdom, we can have compassion for their ignorance and narrow-mindedness. By virtue of being both black people in white America and women in a male-dominated culture, African-American women are not expected to succeed in U.S. institutions of higher education. Indeed, black women have been doubly victimized by scholarly neglect and racist assumptions. Belonging as they do to two groups which have traditionally been treated as inferiors by American society, blacks and women, they have been doubly stigmatized. Over the last few months, this nation has taken a giant step in recognizing the humanity and worth of all of its citizens. Those of us who are African American women in the professoriate can only hope that the symbolism of the recent victory will have implication for the often erroneous perceptions of us in the ivory tower. The subtle and not so subtle attacks on African American woman as the, on the African American woman as a student, a professor, or an administrator in U.S. institutions of higher education can seem relentless. The perception that African American women are incompetent pervades much of their career, forcing upon them the undeserved stress of providing a defense that should not need to that should not need to be given and fighting to prove merit when merit is unquestionably apparent. In an effort to decrease the cognitive dissonance, forgive my jargon, I'll explain it later to those who don't understand, but maybe you'll pick it up. In an effort to decrease the cognitive dissonance caused by a need to reconcile the institution and maintenance of slavery in racial dis and racial discrimination in a land founded on principles of liberty and justice for all human beings. Some in the dominant culture have attempted to diminish their guilt and discomfort with a racist ideology that postulates that African Americans are less than human. Belief in the ideals of freedom, equality, liberty, and justice for all human beings is not compatible with the enslavement and oppression of human beings. White American racism developed out of the need to rationalize enslavement and the etiology of American racism stems in part from an attempt by enslavers to decrease the discomfort of their cognitive, cognitive dissonance brought on by the contradiction between the European democratic ideals on which this country was founded and the reality of American enslavement. The resultant shame and self-hatred that racism has engendered in generations of African Americans has produced pain and psychic wounds difficult for those of the dominant culture to fully comprehend. Dehumanization involves first forming an idea of another human being as a thing so as to sustain one's dehumanized conception of her. Her dehumanized portrayal as a dumb, shiftless, dishonest, difficult troublemaker accompanies the African American woman into the halls of the academy. The ivory tower does not welcome such a person. Obstacles to upward mobility and equal life chances have always confronted African American women. No other racial or ethnic group in the United States has been as enslaved or faced such perpetual racial segregation and discrimination in all institutional domains. Certainly in those institutions which pride themselves on intellectual superiority, 
the black woman may be inclined to feel a sense of intellectual phoniness or the imposter phenomenon, bringing with her the added stigma of presumed intellectual inferiority and incompetence. She must understand the antecedents and consequences of such attributions in order to survive. Our discussions and examinations today and yesterday are important in order to be able to empathize with the African-American woman's plight and not add to her burdens by rejection, rejecting her perceptions. In the white male dominated ivory tower, how does the ebony woman manage to survive the constant assaults on her academic contributions, her intellectual capacity, and her humanity without doubting herself and feeling like the imposter that many in the academy seem to perceive that she is. Elsewhere, I have discussed the concepts of the imposter phenomenon among high achieving African American women and gone into greater detail as to how the psychotherapist can recognize it and help to ameliorate some of the effects. That's beyond the scope of this presentation, uh, but you can find it on my webpage. <laughs> Assaults on her self-esteem can be combated with authenticity and assertiveness. The African American woman may demand respect and say, must demand respect and say out loud what she knows is true. Yet when African American women exhibit assertiveness, they are frequently labeled as loose cannons or troublemakers who are dealing too much in triviality or playing the race card. Misconceptions and stereotypes about race and sex lead to the treatment of and interaction with African American women as labels, thus mystifying the real persons behind the stigma and encouraging self-fulfilling prophecies crafted by the sex and race that hold power. Research indicates that white males show much more favor toward white females and black males than toward black females. This is even truer when the female is outspoken, independent, and assertive. This is a dilemma. Campus life for faculty of color, teaching in predominantly white colleges and universities is often characterized in terms of multiple lens of margin, lenses of marginalities. Research reports that disrespect for African American faculty stemmed from some colleagues' lack of knowledge about black culture in general, as well as a lack of respect for African Americans' academic contributions and their professional opinions. Others have noted that feminist voices are still silenced within the academic culture. There are few opportunities for African American women to express their sadness, disappointment, pain, and rage. The research literature is consistent all conclude that black women faculty are the most stressed, the least satisfied, almost the least represented, possibly the least supported, and the most overworked of all faculty in academe. What is not found is literature on satisfied, well-respected black women faculty. The experiences for many faculty of color at predominantly white colleges and universities have been described as negotiating personal and psychological minefields. Because of their added stressors and unique experiences, constantly being subjected to the ethnocentrism of the dominant culture, African American women in academia can be devastated. An important strategy to assist her in dealing with her stressors is for the black woman to continue to speak, out, speak about their, for black women to speak about their experiences with racism and sexism as we are here at this conference. In doing this and assessing similarities and experiences across the country, African American women are better prepared to demand both the institutional and individual support necessary for changing racist and sexist practices. Despite the overwhelming oppressiveness of growing up a black and a woman in America, some black American women have somehow survived the judgments of the dominant culture both in and out of the academy. As we look at the history of blacks, we find that they have responded to the situations they confronted with an underlying premise of self-worth and competence, even though external circumstances did not seem to warrant such positive self-appraisals. You and our, our speakers here today, all of you, are examples of the heroines and pioneers 
who have withstood the weight of the burdens heaped on our backs to overcome many of the obstacles thrown in our way in order to survive and rise to the top of the ivory tower. We must understand the underpinnings of such strength and use them to empower others to meet the challenges. We also hope to encourage others in the academy to actively work to shed the burden of their ignorance and misinformation. I will now introduce, okay, don't introduce.